Okay, so hello everyone. Um, I'm just going to uh, share some bits on my screen to start with and um, just to introduce the session. So, yes, can you see that? All right? Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Can you still see the presentation, Jess? I can see it. It's not um, full screen, but I can see it still. Okay, that's fine. We'll just keep it like that. Okay. So, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for a workshop on poster design with freelance illustrator Jess Nash. Um, this workshop will last approximately one hour. So, my name is Annabelle, and I work for the Nico Project with Norwich University of the Arts. Um, the NICO project works with universities across East Anglia and in my role I support students from year 9 upwards who are studying any creative subject. We are running a number of live and recorded workshops with artists and my colleagues to support you from working at home whilst your schools and colleges are closed. So after this workshop I will be sending you an evaluation to the email address you signed up with. Um, this is really important for us if you could complete it and that's just because for our project funding that allows us to run workshops like this one you're attending today so I'd really appreciate it if you'd be able to fill that out for us um, and then lastly just a little bit of housekeeping before we started um, so through this workshop um, please keep your video and audio off if you have any questions or technical problems throughout the workshop please use the chat function on the bottom of the screen and I will answer your questions as soon as I can. We are also recording this session, um, so it will be available to other students to access like yourself on the NUA and NICO YouTube channels. Um, and lastly, if you see or hear anything during this presentation that is inappropriate, or if you have any concerns about this workshop or home life, please do not hesitate to message myself on the chat function. So thank you everyone for joining and I hope you enjoy the workshop today. So I am going to stop sharing this screen and I am going to get up the presentation for you Jess and then I'll you take it. Thank you. So I guess whilst Annabelle's doing that I'll just introduce myself again. So hello everyone, my name's Jess. So I'm a freelance illustrator and I actually did my illustration course at NUA. So it's really nice to be back doing a workshop with you guys. So what I thought would be really cool is to share one of my favorite commissions with you. So the commission that I'm sharing with you is one that I got from Penguin Random House. And if anybody knows, they are a book publisher um, based in the UK. And they got in contact with me because they wanted to promote an event that they were putting on for something called Windrush. And they wanted me to create three illustrated posters that celebrated um, the event that they were doing. So I'll explain what Windrush is in a little bit, but the workshop that we're doing today is recreating that brief together. So with you, I'm gonna be creating an illustrated poster and I'm gonna give you all the techniques and the tips so that by the end of it, you'll know how to illustrate for Penguin. I'm if you could do the next slide for me, please. Thank you. So I just wanted to show you um, the finished posters that I did for Penguin. So for each poster, I wanted to celebrate a different positive aspect that the Windrush generation brought to the UK when they came. So on the left in that first poster, I was focusing on the amazing food that they brought over in the food markets. And then on the poster on the right, I was focusing on the way that they physically rebuilt the UK after the Second World War. And then there's one last poster on the next slide. Thank you. And then the theme I was focusing on on this one was family and community and how that's a really big thing in Caribbean culture and how they also brought that to the UK as well. Um, and then the next slide for me. Thank you. And then this is just another little screenshot of that same last poster that you saw. Thank you. So the workshop brief. So what we're going to be doing today is to create an illustrated poster celebrating Windrush. So 
this is the process that I always do when I create illustrations. So I wanted to do the same thing with you guys. So we'll be firstly drawing a rough idea and then we're going to be working on the final idea together. And then the third step is that we're going to be painting or colouring our final idea. And so what is Windrush? I guess you're all kind of wondering what, what the hell is it? So after World War II, uh, people who lived in the Caribbean were invited to the UK in 1948 to help rebuild Britain. They're called the Windrush generation. So they came and they just did an amazing job at being that hand that were needed to get the UK back on its feet. So it's like a huge bit of UK history that a lot of people don't really know about. Um, the Windrush generation brought with them their culture, their food, their literature and their music. So we owe a lot to them. And without them, we wouldn't have celebrations like Notting Hill Carnival, major cities like London, Bristol, Birmingham and Manchester would be a lot less interesting. And the UK would be in a different place, I like guess, financially and structurally as well. And we would never have had people like Rio Ferdinand, if you like football, and writers like Zadie Smith and Mally Brackman, if you like to read. And so I wanted to, as we're visual people, I wanted to show you some images of what the Windrush generation looks like. So they came on this huge ship called the Empire Windrush London, which is how they got their name. Um, they came as musicians and nurses and doctors and craftspeople and teachers and they just physically helped to get the UK back to the position that it needed to be after the Second World War. And so the workshop, we will be creating an illustrated poster celebrating another great thing that the Windrush generation brought to the UK, which is music. So have a think about what the people might look like. So we've just shown you a few photos photos of like their hair and their style, what they'll be doing in your illustration. So if the focus is music, is there maybe going to be dancing? Will they be playing instruments in your illustration? Um, and then also think about how you'll colour your final idea. So I like to paint, so I'm going to be painting my final idea, but I know some of you might have like Wacoms, we might be working digitally, so you can use Photoshop and stuff like that. Um, but that's just to have a think about. So with my other three posters that I showed you, I was focusing on food, family and community. But in this workshop together, we're going to be focusing on um, celebrating music in our illustrated poster. Hopefully that makes sense. And then I just wanted to show you a few more images about how the music has influenced the UK. So when the Rindrush generation came, they brought with the music like reggae, calypso, ska music, which then turned into stuff like bashment and grime. So a lot of the music that we listen to today has come from um, what they brought with them. And so these are some photos of um, dance halls. So in modern term, we would call them clubs, but back in the day, they're called dance halls. So these are some photos from inside there. And when I was looking at these photos, I realized that, oh, they're playing quite a lot of instruments. So I might put that into my illustrations. Also some of the characters and the way they're dancing is really cool. And also they would host big parties in their friends' basements. So community was also a huge thing as well. So these are all the kind of things that I'm starting to think about and things like their hair and their dresses and their hats and how am I gonna get that into the illustration as well. So these are just a few visuals. So what we'll do is we'll just get, I think we'll just crack on and we'll get started. So if you could all get your um, paper or whatever you're drawing with and a pencil, I'm just gonna swap over cameras. So hopefully you can all see this as well on my screen. So what we're gonna do is I'm just going to get a new piece of paper and we're going to spend about 10 minutes just so that we can start drawing up some ideas so I think I'm probably going to get um, some steel pans in there because the instrument that I really like and I know look, that the Caribbean culture came with that so I'm going to start with some musicians in the middle but you can do whatever you want and then I'll probably have some people dancing around the outside so Gonna start with some people. So well, and it is a draft, so, so don't feel like you have to make it amazing. Mine's not gonna be amazing. So I'm gonna have some still pans. 
and I think I'm gonna have this person in a hat. Little tie. So I've got one person here. And then when I was looking at the photos, I remember they had some people playing saxophone, so I'm probably gonna add in saxophone as well. So if any of you have any Bottom questions. Side. Okay, and then I think there's probably space for another person. So I'm probably gonna put another saxophone in here facing the other way. But it's completely up to you. You can, when you think of music, you can put whatever you want. It doesn't have to be actual musicians in here. Okay, so now I've got my, my musicians in there. So now I am going to do some people dancing, just because I feel like where there's music, there's dancing. So I'm going to get some, start to get some people in here. And also I'm thinking about if they're Caribbean, like what kind of hair might they have? Um, what kind of dress sense might they have? So just to make sure that I'm really representing the people in the poster. So I'm now starting to think maybe if they were having parties in their friends' basements, they might have some kids there. So I'm now starting to think about putting maybe some children in here dancing. Maybe I can get them doing the conga or something like that. Got a little girl. I want to do a little girl doing a handstand at the bottom. Get some Afro puffs. Okay. And I think I'm going to just keep adding more and more people. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to add some children at the bottom. Gonna have them dancing a little bit. So also you guys, um, you've been sent a playlist. So if you're kind of wondering what music they brought with them, I keep talking about the music they brought with them. If you have a little listen to the playlist, I think it might help um, help you guys think about the kind of music and what it sounded like and that might help with the energy of the illustration as well. Let's get some more hair. Okay, so we've got some people doing the conga here. I think I need to get more people dancing around here because it's a little bit empty around here. So now I'm starting to think about if I'm, I've got about five minutes left, so we've all got about five minutes left if I'm happy with the image or if I want to start adding things up here. But I think I just want the image to just feel really joyful. So I'm just going to keep adding more people dancing and I might add some more instruments maybe at the top, some more people playing instruments. So completely do this in your own style. It doesn't have to look like mine at all, but um, this is just how I draw I draw in like funny shapes so if you find it easy to kind of copy the way that I'm drawing you can do that but um, it would be really great if you could do it in your own style as well so don't feel like you have to do it exactly like mine so 
So I think I'm going to make this one a woman playing an instrument because I don't have any women playing instruments yet. So we basically just want the image to feel a bit full. Um, yeah, so not loads of white space, but also if you feel like you are finished, um, then you can stop. <laughs> um, so we've got about two more minutes anyway. So if you do have a few more ideas, then you can keep going with your ideas. I'm just going to have a quick look at my drawing and think about where I could add more things or where I could add different types of people. So if you need a minute to just step back and think about that then you can as well. I might put another steel pan here actually. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you've got one more minute. So um, if you're if you're finishing up, then that's fine. Um, just take a minute to have a look or have a break. Um, but yeah, one more minute, and then um, we'll move on to the second part of doing your idea. Okay, cool. So you should now maybe have a bit of an idea of what you want to do when you come to your final piece. So this is my rough idea. Um, so as I said before, I really liked the um, instruments that were in the pictures that we saw on the presentation. So I've got a couple of saxophones here and a trumpet. I've got some still pans. Um, and I just wanted to have there to be really good energy in the pictures. So I've got some people um, dancing as well i've got some children i think when i come to do my final thing i'll probably add a lot more people in the background maybe around here but for now i think it looks pretty good so for the next stage you can if you want to you can draw your rough idea again on a new piece of paper but if you're kind of happy with what you've done i kind of like my idea and i don't really want to draw it again so i'm gonna um stick with this idea I'm not going to draw it again I'm just going to do my final thing on the top of here so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing skin color because it's about Windrush generation and those are the people that came from the Caribbean they're going to be lots of different shades of brown so I'm going to start with the skin color which is what I usually do first when I illustrate um, so you can grab I don't know if you're using pencils or paints or whatever it is but you can start to grab your colors and think about what kind of skin colors you're going to make um, I'm going to be using acrylic paint so I'm going to just quickly show you how I mix colors for anybody else who's doing acrylic paint I'm just going to show you how I mix skin color so I've just got a piece of cardboard I just work on cardboard so I start by making orange so make orange first with 
yellow red and then I'll make purple with yellow and blue so I'm just going to mix these to show you so first I make orange You can see that it's orange color. Okay, cool. And then I'll make purple. And then what I do is I mix the orange and the purple together to make brown. So I'm just going to do that. So mix the orange, a little bit of purple, and it makes a brown colour. So if you want it to look a bit more rich, then I start to add a little bit more red. Maybe add a little bit more orange again. I'll just show you at the top of the paper that I've got a brown now. So obviously not everybody's going to be the same colour of brown. So you can start to make darker browns, lighter browns. So you can add more purple to make a darker brown like this. Or you can start to add more yellow to make a lighter brown. Or you can start looking at using white and stuff like that. Well, I'm just going to start with the skin colour now. Um, but you can start with whatever you feel comfortable with. But I like doing the skin, so I'm going to start with that. So once I've made a skin colour that I like, I just use that across a few people in the illustration. So I start with this guy. I might make a few more people similar colour and then I'll start to change colour. And maybe this person as well. Okay, cool. And then I can start to use a different type of brown for a few people as well. And maybe this person. Okay, so if you if you're a bit faster than me, I'm a bit slow. <laughs> if you're a bit faster than me, then you can start to do stuff like the hair. You can start um, adding in colour to the hair, and also you do stuff like the clothes. So I'm just going to do a few more people's um, skin first, and then I'll do the clothes and the hair second. But if you're faster than me, then you can you can go ahead of me and do that. Hopefully you can start to see it's coming to life a little bit more now. Okay, and I'm up to lighter brown so that people are different colours. Okay, cool. 
so then I might do the rest of the people. This color. Okay, cool. I think I'm done. Okay, so another thing that you can do and that I tend to do is at the moment I've just got one flat colour on their face. So what I like to do is I, whatever shade of brown I've just mixed, I make a slightly darker shade of brown so that I can start to do shadows on their face. So I'll just show you what I mean. So for instance, um, see here, I'm just going to, I've got a slightly darker shade of brown and I'm just adding a little bit of definition to the face so it doesn't look so flat. So I do stuff, I do that on like the nose and underneath the chin so that it's just a little bit more interesting to look at. And stuff like on the hands as well. You can do that one. Okay. So I'm going to stop doing the hair, but obviously um, you can do it at whatever pace you want to. But because I've mixed the brown that I, I kind of like, I'm just going to start doing everybody's hair. I might not do them all the same colour, but just to get the hair in. So I want to make sure that we've got some curly hair in there, we've got some afros, we've got some slick down hairstyles. So just make sure that everybody looks a bit different. They don't all look exactly the same. Hopefully if I'm skitting on all right. <laughs> if you need any, um, if you need me to go over any steps or you need any help with anything, you can um, let us know in the chat and I'll slow down or repeat stuff, but hopefully you're all right. So we're just colouring in our image at the moment. So what I think I'm probably going to do next is I'm going to start doing their clothes and their instruments, I think. So I'm just going to finish it off on some of their hair that I've not finished yet. And also, if you've got stuff like colouring pencils, um, once the paint is dry, you can go over and add a bit more texture with colouring pencils as well, which is quite nice. Now 
and also you can use the colouring pencils to do stuff like facial features because I draw quite small sometimes my paintbrush isn't small enough to do the facial features so I'll, I'll use a pencil to go back in and do the bits that my paintbrush is too big to do. Okay, cool. So I'm now going to start doing the clothes. Um, I think I'm going to keep it quite simple. I'm just going to do like blues and beiges, beiges for the clothes. I don't think I'm going to do crazy colours because I want to keep it a bit symmetrical. So I usually, I'm quite lazy, so I usually will just mix like two colours that I like and then I'll just use them across the illustration. So if you've got a colour that you like already, you can just use that for a few people across the illustration, same way that we did with the skin. So just mix a good colour and then you can just keep using it along. So I'll probably start with this person actually. Okay, so I'll probably use that blue in one more place and then um, I'll start to do like we did with the skin where make a darker colour than the one that you've got already and then you can use that to make more details in things like the shirt and buttons. Um, so yeah, I'll use the blue one more place, probably here and then I'll start to do a bit more detail. Okay, cool. So I'm just like highlighting stuff like the elbow um, for a bit of definition with that darker blue that I've just made and things like the edge of the arm probably need a little bit more and then you can start to add in stuff like collars so I'm just going to add a bit of a collar as well And then I'll do the same to the girl at the bottom. Doing the splits, she'll need a little bit of shadow on her legs as well. Cool. So then you can just carry on adding colour to the rest of your outfits. So I'm going to just do that. So feel free to do that as well. So I probably should have showed you that. I just used the colours that I made before, the brown that I made before, 
I just added a bit of um, red to it to make a beige colour. Um, so I'm going to use that as some like shirt or trouser colours along the illustration. So that's if anybody else is painting along with me. If you're not, then that's all right. So probably do uh, this colour. So you've, um, we've got about 15, about 15 ish minutes left. So don't worry if you've not finished it because I'm, I'm not going to finish mine um, in the workshop, but I'll probably work on it in the week. So feel free to keep working on it in the week. So we don't have to have a final, final thing by three, but just to let you know what the time is. So like we did with the other shirts, I'm just going to mix a darker colour so I can just add a bit of detail to like the pants and the dress and the shirt. So if you are kind of at the same stage with me, then you can start adding a bit of uh, darker colours to the characters to make them stand out a little bit. So hopefully you can see it's coming together a little bit more now. So I'm probably gonna just start to do things like the um, the musical equipment. I'll probably do that next. Oh, sorry, I've just seen a question. Who are my inspirations? Do you mean artist-wise or? Yes, okay, artist-wise. Um, I don't know if you know an artist called Jacob Lawrence. He's like an amazing painter um, and he's American, but he painted a lot um, in Harlem, which is where he used to live. And I really love the way that he conveys character. So he's a really great person to check out. But yeah, definitely Google. <laughs> he's really great. I didn't, I didn't learn about him till a couple of years ago, actually. So yeah, I have, I have a lot of inspiration from him. He's awesome.
Okay, so I'm going to start on the instruments, I think, as well. Yeah, if you've got any questions, let me know. Be nice to answer them. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start on the equipment. How long have I been drawing for? Okay, um, I used to draw been drawn since I was young I guess everybody really they draws when they're younger don't they so I used to draw when I was really young um, and I drew all throughout school really and the subjects I only really liked was art and English so I did art for GCC and I did it for the sixth form as well then I did it for foundation and then I eventually ended up doing it at uni so I've been doing it I'm 28 so maybe drawing for like don't know like 20 years maybe um, but I just, I find it really relaxing drawing. Um, I know not everybody does, but I really like it. And it's nice that you get to do it as a career now. <laughs> when I was younger, we didn't really know that you could do this as a career. So it's nice that you guys are growing up knowing that you can do this as a career. Would I recommend a foundation course first or go straight into a full length course in uni? Um, I, I did a foundation course um, because when I was um, in sixth form, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do art, but I didn't know um, what specific subjects. So I found my foundation course really helpful because for, I think it was for six weeks, we got to try lots of different um, aspects of art and then at the end of the six weeks you get to choose your specialism so I choose I chose um, graphics and illustration and then that's how I found out about illustration and I went to do my degree in it so I think if you know what you want to do um, then I'd probably go straight to uni but if you're not really sure about what you'd like to do like art wise I'd probably do a foundation course because um, when I was doing it, it was free I'm not sure if it's still free but um, it was really helpful for me to whittle down what I actually like. So I definitely, I would look into it if you are interested in doing a foundation course, have a look into it. Um, but it did really help me, but it's obviously up to you. But I did really like it when I did it. During uni, did I do extracurricular activities art wise? Or oh, what like stuff apart stuff away from art? Things outside of art class. Did I? Um I'm not sure if I did. I, I should have though. Um I think I was so, um, I wanted to do a really good job at art and so I wasn't really looking at other things apart from art but um, I would have liked to do other things apart from art because I think when you're interested in other stuff it feeds into your artwork anyway. So I think my work would have been a lot better at uni if I would have done other things outside of art like even if it was a sport maybe, um, that would have been really good. Hopefully you're all getting on the right with your um, your illustrations as well. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did before where I'm mixing a darker colour so that I can outline the instruments again so they pop a little bit more. So I'm sure you, you guys are realising what I'm doing now so you'll be able to do it yourselves too. And what I um, usually do is once I'm happy with what I've painted, I'll scan it in to Photoshop and then I'll 
add more texture and I'll add backgrounds and stuff like that. So if you do like to work dig digitally, you can um, maybe take a picture of what you've done. And then if you've got, um, I don't know if you've got an iPad or you've got something like that, you can start to digitally add more textures and things like that to your work. So if you do like to work uh, digitally, you can do that with what you've done today as well. I actually don't use a digital tablet, um, so I I do most of my stuff as you're seeing it now, like hand drawn and painted. And then um, what I do is I scan in. I've got a scanner, so I'll just scan in my drawing, and then I'll use Photoshop to add um, a little bit more detail to it. But there are free versions of Photoshop around, like. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's maybe called Blender or something like that. So you can use um, free versions of Photoshop. You don't have to pay for Photoshop. Yeah, if I can um, add into that, Jess, um, the other free software is something called GIMP. So it's G-I-M-P. And, um, and that has the exact same functions really as Photoshop. So that's another good software. Um, and yeah, and everyone, I've just put our instagram and twitter handles so it'd be really great to see any of your work so if you'd like to share it with us please do there thank you So we've got um, about 10 minutes left. Um, so obviously keep, keep going with what you're doing. Um, but I just wanted to show you one last thing and then you can kind of carry on for the next 10 minutes. Um, I just wanted to show you how I do like the facial features, just in case you wanted to know. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I drew a quite small. So all of the facial features are quite small. So what I might do now is I might get a colouring pencil and just go over the detail because my paintbrush is too big to do the detail by hand. So I'm just going to get a um, pencil and do the detail. But if you're not painting um, or if you don't want to see this part, that's fine. <laughs> but I'm just going to grab a pencil so I can show you um, this bit. So I've just got different um, types of brown and purple. And black. Okay. So I'm probably going to use the darkest one, which is that one. So I'm just going to go over like small details that I can't get with my paintbrush. So I'll go over like the mouth and the chin.
And if you wanted, you could like add more texture over your paint to the hair. If you wanted it to look a little bit more curly, you can just do squiggles over the top. So it looks like hair. We have another question, um, Jess. So someone has asked, um, obviously there's a role of being doing poster design, but what other kind of industries could illustration feed into, um, aside from the obvious ones like a book? Oh, okay, cool, another question. Okay, uh, obviously poster design is one, but what other kinds of industries could illustration feed into? So, okay, so I've um, started to do animation. Um, so obviously illustration and animation is quite different but um, I learned by doing things like GIFs so I've done um, a music video which is really cool and I just worked with a writer she had um, she was doing a, a residency a writing residency and she wanted to get her words into visuals and so I worked with her to do an animation um, you could do stuff like let me try and think what else? So you can illustrate essays if you're interested in doing stuff like that. So instead of it being books, um, you can do editorial illustrations. So stuff for like newspapers as well, or magazines online. Podcasts is something that I would like to get into. So, you know, sometimes podcasts, they have like covers. So before you click on the podcast, it's like a visual on there. So you can do stuff like that. Um, I think it kind of depends on what you're interested in. And then you can kind of make a career pathway out of that. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't just do poster designs. I kind of do um, a lot of other things because I'm interested in other things as well. You could illustrate for T-shirts. So there's a company called, um, or what are they called now? I can't remember what they're called, but I'll um, put it in the chat once I remember. But they work with different illustrators and you can create t-shirts for them. Um, and then obviously you get the money as well. So you can just collaborate with other industries as well. It's not Redbubble. Let me just quickly check what it is and I'll put it in the chat because I should know. Everpress. So I'm just going to write it in the chat. And Good Day Club. Work with uh, designers and illustrators to create um, t shirts. So stuff that can actually get worn. Um, how did you get the Penguin Commission? I actually got the Penguin Commission on Twitter. So um, there was a lady who worked for Penguin. Um, but nobody kind of knew who she was at the time. And she was asking if anybody knew any um, illustrators that were of um, Caribbean descent because she wanted to get them to do some posters for an event she was doing. So my sister tagged me in the post um, and then I didn't hear anything from that lady for like two or three weeks. And then I got an email a few weeks later and she looked at my website um, and then she asked me if I wanted to do the brief and that she was actually from Penguin. So that's how I got it actually so it's a really good idea if you like the work that you're doing to um, put it online you can put it on Instagram you can make a website um, but just maybe put a, a watermark of your just your initials in the corner so that it doesn't get um, like ripped off but that's how I got the Penguin Commission in a really weird way but it was through social media which was quite nice um, but when you're nice to people, you'll get more stuff as well. So I worked with that lady again on a commission for a different project. So um, when people like your work, they'll just keep recommending you, which is really nice. So just keep making really nice work and being nice to people and people will want to help you out. So you've got uh, three more minutes. I um, What I'm going to do is maybe I'm probably going to work on this in the week. I think I'm going to scan it in and then digitally colour the rest of my stuff and add a little bit more detail um, and probably more people in the background because I think it looks a little bit too empty for me. So I'm going to work on that in the week. So if you finished in this 
hour then that's amazing but um, if you haven't finished then you do have the whole week to um to do it as well and like annabelle said um if you want to share what you're doing on instagram there's in the chat there's like some twitter handles and instagram handles if you let us know it would be really nice to see what you've done so enjoy uh, working for the last two minutes i'm just going to finish off a little bit as well for the last two minutes and i don't know annabelle if you've got anything else that you wanted to um add as well or just share my screen for a little bit while you're finishing off. Cool. Sorry, I think I missed that. What did you say, Annabelle? <laughs> oh, that's all right. Um, I just, I'm going to share my screen for a little bit just um, while we're finishing off. Awesome, yeah, sounds good. Has that come up okay, Jess? Yeah, cool. It. Okay, so um, yeah, just to finish off, um, like I said, thank you everyone for staying with us for the whole hour, um, and I hope you've really enjoyed the workshop. Um, so this is just a bit about you know what I do in my role and next steps. So if you um, want any more information about what what other workshops we are currently offer. Um, you can contact um, me on arts at takeyourplace.ac.uk um, and my role is, like I said, I'm an arts higher education champion working for Norwich University of the Arts. So we're, we're, we're putting on quite a few workshops with different artists from different areas. So for instance, we've had photography, um, we've had more fine art based, we've obviously got illustration now. So um, yeah, there's quite a lot going on there. Um, and also, like, we've got this bit about your future. So um, a lot of you might be, you're either at school or college or further afield. But um, if you are if you are thinking about options coming up to, you know, whether it's GCSE, A-level or university, like, just think about what careers you're interested in. Um, and if so, if there's any qualifications, you might need to achieve this. Um, but ultimately, just do something that you enjoy. Um, because if you really enjoy it, you will do really well. Um, and there was some really good um, input as well, Jess, about the foundation. Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> that's right, because, um, yeah, I did a foundation as well. So I did illustration degree, same as Jess. Um, mm -hmm. um, but in my foundation, I actually did fine art. So for me, it was a really good diagnostic course to let me... I kind of explored fine art but then I actually realized after coming to an open day that illustration was the course for me rather than being a fine artist so if I hadn't done that course I wouldn't have learned that but equally like Jess said if you know that you love that particular subject then a foundation course might not necessarily be the right route for you um, and equally a number of universities now offer something called a year zero so Norwich University of the Arts do that so whereas a foundation course is more diagnostic where you do fine art, graphics, fashion, you kind of rotate around different creative subject areas and then specialise, a year zero is in that course. So you could do a year zero in illustration and it'll be a four year degree rather than three years. So that's kind of a good basis if you know what you want to do, but maybe your practice isn't quite up to degree level standard yet. Um, so there are so many different options out there. And just by doing that research, you'll see. Um, and as we see there, we've got our Twitter and Instagram handles there. So it would be really great to see the work that you have been doing. So I'm going to stop sharing that now. Um, okay. So does it, yeah, does anyone have any more questions um, before we end the session? Obviously put them in the chat. We'll, we'll just kind of hang around for... A little bit longer before we end the session. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for participating. And that's oh, great. That's yeah, really nice you. feedback. So the Instagram, if you, I just put it in the chat. 
above. So it's, um, if you look at, like I said, look up at the chat and I've typed it all out. So Instagram handle is at NUA Outreach, um, at Jess underscore Nash, and then my one is at A Osborne underscore HEC. Um, hopefully you can see that above in the chat as well as the Twitter handle as well. Okay, well, if we don't have any more questions, I think we'll um, make a close to the session. Thank you, and thank you for all your comments. It's really nice to hear that you've enjoyed the workshop. But yeah, if that's all right with you, Jess, I think um, yeah, cool. yeah. we'll kind of make a close. So, like I said, thank you again, everyone. Um, and yeah, we hopefully you get to see your work and see what you were doing. Um, but that's great. Nice to meet you all, thank you. <laughs> yep. Okay, well, thank you very much, everyone, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>